Before we get to Tesla's massive day, check out what NVIDIA's CEO just said about Elon Musk. I'm super excited about the financing opportunity that they're doing. You know, if the, only, the only regret I have about XAI, we're an investor already. Mm -hmm. the, the only regret I have is I didn't give him more money. You know, it, almost everything that Elon's part of, you really want to be part of as well. And, and uh, he gave us the opportunity to invest in XAI. I'm just delighted by that. And so it's, that's, not, that's an investment into a really great future company. And I'm really excited about that. That's not, venture, venture, uh, that's not uh, vendor financing per se. Meanwhile, Tesla investors still crying in the corner, wishing that Tesla had already invested in XAI. But thankfully, we are currently voting on that very option. Make sure you vote. Interesting comments from Jensen then. Wishing he'd given more money, e.g. invested more in XAI, and also pointing out that you really do want to be invested in every Musk-related project you can. If you happen to be a public market investor only, that limits you currently to Tesla and ideally Tesla investing in XAI with shareholder approval. These comments from Jensen Wong follow some reporting from Doomberg's Ed Ludlow, who wrote that XAI has boosted its fundraising effort to $20 billion round, and importantly, Allegedly, NVIDIA was investing $2 billion in the latest round. Speaking of $2 billion, Sawyer Merritt pointing out, after Tesla's Megapack account shared this short video, where the caption, 2.2 gigawatt hours of Megapacks are operating in Western Australia, supporting the transition from coal to more sustainable and resilient energy sources. The moral of the story here is don't sleep on Tesla Energy. Each of these projects can be worth hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars tesla's energy projects have enormous margins unlike the piddly little vehicles that consumers buy predominantly based on emotional reasons tesla's mega packs their gigantic fuck off batteries are business decisions purchased by people in charge of saving and or making money they are absolute no-brainers when you look at the numbers on these things they make so much financial sense do the math how many tesla vehicles would they need to sell to do two billion dollars in revenue but wait Currently, we know that Tesla's energy storage products, these gigantic mega packs, have much bigger profit margins than the vehicles sold. So not just how many vehicles would you need to sell to do this much revenue, but the equivalent amount of profit. One more time, don't sleep on Tesla Energy or Tesla AI. FSD version 14.1 went out the same day as Tesla's new more affordable 3 and Y standard range launched in the United States. Zach posting a video here on X, Elon Musk responding, great work by the Tesla AI team and much more still to come. By version 14.3, your car will feel like it is sentient. We'll watch this clip from Zach, who wrote, first of all, wow, zero disengagements or interventions thus far. The confidence and overall human-like driving is next level. The steering inputs are so smooth. Braking inputs are earlier and more linear than before. It gives off RoboTaxi vibes with how it navigates parking lots, plus how it drives and how quickly it backs into parking spots. Blah, blah, in other words, big improvement winning. Mr. Breaking News, Sawyer Merritt posting, Tesla FSD version 14.1 just drove me through a McDonald's drive through by itself. It pulled up, stopped at the ordering station, then continued and stopped at the pay and pickup window. Wild. Now think about that. Think about what's actually involved in a vehicle, knowing how to use a McDonald's drive through This isn't navigating on a highway where it needs to know, okay, there's a lane divider, what's the speed limit, where are the vehicles, don't hit the other vehicles, okay, not too hard. This is understanding the process of ordering McDonald's drive through You have to know what to do, where to stop, where to go to wait to pick up your order. You need real world intelligence. You need to perceive, not just see, but perceive, understand what you're actually looking at. Ah, that's where I stop to make the order. That's where I go to collect the order. See, perceive, plan, and act. This is an amazing demonstration. Again, it boggles the mind that people are not seeing what's happening here, or if they are, they just don't care or understand. Sawyer points out that his video cut off near the end because he filled up his phone, but let's watch the clip. Even the most skeptical interpretation of a Tesla vehicle on FSD 14.1 successfully navigating a McDonald's drive through even the most skeptical Interpretation is, well, we didn't really know what to do, but it was just following the vehicle in front of it and copying what it was doing, which is still incredible. And the question I have is, can your vehicle do this? Going through the McDonald's drive through on FSD version 14.1. Saw Chris from uh, 30 Tesla try this, so I had to do it. Let's see if it'll stop at the order station here. Again, I'm not like telling it to do this. 
I just turned on FST when I came into the McDonald's area. Rolling down my window. Oh my god. Hi, welcome to McDonald's. Are you going to be using the mobile app today? No. Okay, I got you. Can I just get a one small fry? Small fry? That's it. Well, it's up here first one of them. It's just going to be 324. Thank you. No problem. Oh my god. It continued. <laughs> I mean, the car must know. Like, it must, the mics or something must listen in, right? For it to know when to continue? Either that or maybe it was following and the vehicle in front only just started moving. So it just started following. Regardless, let's watch the rest of this video and remember to ask the question, can your vehicle do this? I'll go full screen for you guys. You can see the blue glow with FSD version 14. I'm on uh, standard mode, by the way. Crazy. Just waiting for the other cars, okay. Pretty wild. So, is it gonna stop with the pay area? Let's see. And then will it stop at the second window? And how does it know when the guy's handing me back my card? Are the cameras just watching me? <laughs> all right, here we go. Again, I'm not doing anything right now. The car's doing all of this. It's stopping. See. All right, so I've just got to jump in here. So far, extremely impressive. The vehicle, the Tesla, could have gone a lot further forward, but it has stopped perfectly in line with the window. Now, we could say maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe this was the exact amount of space it decided to give the vehicle in front, which is also stopped, therefore it stopped. It's also possible that the vehicle knew where it needs to stop at the McDonald's drive-thru. Again, can your vehicle do this? How does it know? And thus concludes the video, as I pointed out, he filled up his phone, but the commentary pulled up, stopped at the ordering station, then continued and stopped at the pay and pickup window. Wild. So, CEO of the world's most valuable company, Jensen Wong, essentially saying that if you get an opportunity to throw money at any Elon Musk-led project, you probably want to do it as much as you can. He regrets not throwing more at XAI. Tesla FSD, latest version, absolutely killing it, extremely impressive. Meanwhile, Robotax is currently scaling throughout the US, soon the world. Massive progress with the Optimus Humanoid Robot as well. And now back to Tesla's almost entirely irrelevant vehicle business. Let's see what Bloomberg had to say about Tesla unveiling their more affordable Model 3 and S in the United States yesterday. We're keeping our eye on is Tesla. The company had teased a big product announcement. We got it. The shares fell. A lower, uh, basically a revamp of some of their models to basically, well, lower the price just a bit. Max Chafkin joins us right now as the host of Musk Inc. And he joins us right now. So let's just cut to the chase here. You're basically taking the Model Y, the Model 3, basically cutting the price. Yeah, making it a little bit cheaper. Yeah. I'd say right. this was a small announcement, yeah. kind of posing as a big announcement. Yeah. I, I believe there is. sort of like the LeBron announcement where everybody thought <laughs> yeah, he was going to retire. And apparently selling Michelob or something. To the yeah. uh, LeBron announcement. Yeah. Uh, cloth seats instead of yeah. leather seats. Um, most of the Model 3s and Ys have glass roofs. That's kind of one of the distinctive features. This yeah. new cheaper version yeah. does not. It's really all about making the car yeah. a little bit cheaper. Which is always awkward, those glass roofs, like when there's a big bus going by and you look up and everyone's <laughs> staring down at you. Uh, I'm not yeah. a fan, but I guess people like them. It does yeah. create kind of a luxury feeling, I guess, and this is yeah. going to definitely be something else, right? Yeah. This is a, a lower end model. It's going to be priced that way. I, I think what's What's difficult, one of the reasons the price is going down, is Tesla investors, you know, they have very high expectations. You're talking about a retail community that really believes in and, Elon Musk. And they wanted just, more. And let's just be. Rarely do I so completely and utterly agree with somebody in the mainstream finance media. I'm not sure how, but somebody yesterday managed to capture footage of me reading some of the commentary after Tesla's more affordable 3 and Y were announced. But the people are retarded. So let me translate as obnoxiously as I possibly can, right? I'm disappointed actually equals I'm retarded. I warned Tesla's investors, retail investors, multiple times to temper their expectations because I saw the levels of retardation and delusion out there thinking, what the fuck are these people smoking? Now, I have earned the right to be extremely obnoxious on this particular subject. Why? 
All the way back in February of this year, about eight months ago, I predicted within just a few percent where the starting price of both of these vehicles would come in. And as I've said, it's not because I'm a genius. It's just that I'm not retarded. As a Tesla investor, it's my duty to be well informed. So I listen to what the company tells us. Tesla told investors, in addition to the fact that new, more affordable vehicle models, plural, would be coming in the second half of 2025. They also explained that these models were in essence an interim product to be introduced between their current Gen 3 and Y and a future generation of vehicles to be built on what they call the Unbox system, the modular manufacturing system. They told us that these products could allow Tesla to maximize capacity, probably add about a million units per year of vehicle volume without making major changes to existing facilities and existing production lines that implement a few features of the modular system, but clearly not all because implementing all of them will require building completely new production systems, processes, lines, everything that's coming. They've told us that's coming. We know that's coming, but these are not that we knew that. So therefore the thinking process would have to go as follows. And I thought through this out loud in many videos, they're obviously going to be based on the three and Y because they're already making the three and Y and they're not doing entirely new production processes and production lines. 3NY sell like hotcakes. So how do they get the cost down? Well, uh, obviously, they remove some of the high-end features that not everybody would be willing to pay for. So then you deduce, okay, well, do they really need 69 speakers in the sound system? Probably not. They can reduce that, save a bit of money. Rear screen, now, nah, delete that, save a bit of money. I mean, I went through this whole process. And that's how I came out with the price points. So for investors who actually believed they'd reason their way through this to be disappointed, they've discovered that they are in fact retarded. Now there's a separate cohort of people that didn't think about it and they're like, why is it not cheaper? Whatever, you didn't think about it, okay? You get a pass, you're not retarded, you just didn't actually take the time to think about it, which might be semi-retarded at most. But for any investor out there, a Tesla investor who actually is genuinely disappointed about the price points and the features of these vehicles, who thought that they'd actually taken the time to think through this, they have discovered there's something severely broken in their reasoning faculties. The fact that they couldn't think from first principles, listen to what Tesla had been telling investors and reason through that and come up with a reasonably accurate guess as to price points and features that will be removed. That's a very strong signal. Your deductive reasoning faculties are deficient. Now I'm not trying to be a dick, but sometimes the truth hurts. There were a lot of Tesla investors who were disappointed. Some of them don't bother thinking about anything. So I mean, not hate to hear, you to you. But those who did actually believe that they'd thought deeply about this and then still ended up disappointed. But the people are retarded. Clear, okay. When, when everyone saw that, that those cryptic uh, X's, X posts, or whatever you call them, mm -hmm. I mean, all, everyone assumed this was going to be a new big model of some kind, a new roadster or, or something even bigger than that. I mean, I'd say that yeah. people who are following the company closely, including readers of our journalism, yeah. knew very well what it was. Yeah. Uh, but the but among the kind of retail community, the yeah. Reddit community, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Roadster, there were even speculation, oh, he was going to have a GPU, Tesla's going to compete with NVIDIA, or maybe it's going to fly. There were all of these kind of wild... Wow. Uh, uh, thoughts going around on, on the internet and yeah. and, right. and again and in like, the newsroom too max don't cut us out <laughs> yeah we're but conspiracy like, theorists too just to wrap a bow on this it sounds like you're saying that tesla in some ways it's a victim of its own hype cycle that this was too hyped well i mean look tesla is wildly overvalued as a car company and and so anytime elon musk does anything that makes it look like a car company it's sort of bound to hurt the stock price because if you compare it to toyota or gm or any other sort of normal car company it looks very very, very expensive. If you compare it, if you think of it as a, a futuristic AI company that makes flying GPUs, well, then maybe you can justify, uh, you know, the high premiums that it's trading at right now. Yeah. You know, I really thought we were onto something with this. How could we have been so wrong? Want more content? Early access? A bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.